Hello to all. Fall in love with smart learning. I am Dr. Vishnu. So in this video, I am going to talk to you about my future plans with all of you. So please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And please make sure that you follow my Instagram page as well for more amazing updates. So two to three days before, um, I had shared my idea of gifting you with a pharmacology series. So this video is an extension of that. So I'll be talking about my detailed plan. So it is not just pharmacology that I will be guiding you. You know, I'll be guiding you. I'll be also uh, targeting pharmacotherapeutics because you know pharmacotherapeutics is very easy because unless you understand the disease or how the disease occurs in the body, you can never justify the rationality of the treatment provided. So I'll be targeting pharmacotherapeutics as well. I'll be targeting pathophysiology. Basically pathophysiology comes under pharmacotherapeutics. So it is a kind of integrated thing. I'll be talking about toxicology also. And this toxicology is very important because, you know, some days before I got a question regarding beta blocker poisoning. There was a case of beta blocker poisoning. And you know very well that the antidote of beta blocker poisoning is mainly especially propranolol poisoning is glucagon. So even if it is a normal medicine, if you overdose on that also, it is a problem. So if you overdose on that, what is the effect in the body or how it causes problems in the body and how can you identify it and what is the correct antidote or how you can properly manage a poisoned patient. So that comes under clinical toxicology. I'll be talking on that as well. I'll also talk about patient counseling because, you know, uh, patient counseling is very important. Like, for example, if you have seen my post on Instagram, I had talked about a very interesting aspect of patient counseling in which I differentiated between amoxicillin alone and amoxicillin clavulanate separately. So if you are taking amoxicillin alone, you can take it after food because, you know, it has a it has a tendency to cause gastrointestinal distress. So you can take it after food. But when it comes to amoxicillin clavulanic acid, you should avoid fatty meal or meals that are rich in fat because fatty meal will interfere with the absorption of clavulanic acid. And when clavulanic acid is not functioning properly, amoxicillin will also not be able to function properly because clavulanic acid is a beta lactamase inhibitor. That means it blocks the enzyme which breaks down amoxicillin. So that is why if a patient is taking amoxicillin clavulanic acid, we should advise those patients that as long as your treatment course is going on, you should try to avoid junk food you should try to avoid fatty food as much as possible. So that is why I said that patient counseling is very important. Like you can give as many medicines as you want to a patient. But if you cannot suggest dietary plans, if you cannot suggest lifestyle modifications, what are the things that the patient should be alert about? If you can't advise the patient, then what is the point in giving medicines? Medicines will not work. So that is why I'll talk about patient counseling for specific diseases, specific medications as well. So that is also in my plan. I'll also talk about, uh, you know, newer medications that are coming in the market. Like, for example, uh, we already know that there are so many medications for different diseases. I'll just give you an example. Uh, this was a medication that I think came uh, five years before. And this name is Ibalizumab. It is actually a monoclonal antibody. Ibalizumab. I-B-A-L-I-Z-U-M-A-B. Ibalizumab. And this is the first monoclonal in, uh, antibody that is actually used in HIV patients. Basically, when a patient is suffering from HIV, we usually give oral tab. We have so many medications that are given for. We have, you know, Lamivudin. Uh, we have, you know... NNRTI, NRTI, protease inhibitors, ritonavir, etc, etc. So many medicines we have, but none of them are injectables or, you know, monoclonal antibodies. But when it comes to Ibalizumab, it is the first monoclonal antibody 
approved for the treatment of HIV and I think it was approved in 2018. You can just check it out. I'm not very sure of the date. So there are so many, you know, interesting medicines coming in the market and we are not aware of them. So as a part of YouTube Shorts and also as a part of Instagram Reels, I'll be talking about newer molecules for specific diseases every alternate day or maybe thrice in a week or something like that. So please make sure that once again, as I said before, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow my Instagram page so that you get updated about this amazing information from time to time. Coming Thursday, I'll be talking about anti-diabetic drugs. Now, many people actually suggested that, you know, we should start topics in an order. So actually, I had plans of starting from general pharmacology like that. But uh, due to some time constraints and I have some other things to do also, I just thought that I'll start with anti-diabetics. So what I'm planning to do is that, for example, let me tell you, I'll give you a demo as in how I'm planning to guide you. So for example, coming Thursday, I'll talk about anti-diabetics. So I will not cover the entire chapter in a particular video because anti-diabetics is a huge concept and I want to make the videos as short as possible. So what I'll do is I'll be covering specific classes in a particular video and like that lot of classes will be there. So finally after maybe one week or two weeks when the series is over of a particular chapter, I'll be compiling them under a common playlist in my YouTube channel. So the benefit is that you can watch it anytime any time, whether whatever country you belong to, whatever time zone you are in, you can watch it anytime you wish. And after watching those videos, if you have any doubts, you can contact me at Instagram. You have my phone number as well. And once a particular chapter is over, I'll be introducing practice MCQs. I'm working on plans for the same so that, you know, it's not that you simply watch the video, but you can actually check how much you are aware about that particular topic through my practice MCQs. So it will include case studies. It can include, you know, twisted questions. It can include direct questions, all types. I'll try to, you know, make it, you know, in a mix up kind of thing so that, you know, it will be like a brainstorming session for you. So these are my ideas. So once again, I'll be targeting pharmacology, you know, very well. I'll be targeting patient counseling. Patient counseling means we have drug associated counseling and disease associated lifestyle modifications that we require. I'll be targeting pharmacotherapeutics under that itself pathophysiology will come because unless you don't know how a particular disease occurs in the body, then you can't make a proper diagnosis. And if the diagnosis is not proper, then you can never justify whether a particular treatment is rational or not. I'll also talk about, you know, newer medications that are coming in the market or maybe past medications as well, maybe in the past three to five years, which you were not aware about. I'll talk about that. What are its interesting features? What is it approved for? What are the, you know, adverse effects or side effects associated with it? And I'll also talk about clinical toxicology. That means overdosing. So it can be, you know, medications or it can be other things also. Like for example, we have pesticide poisoning, we have hydrocarbon poisoning, you know, we have snake bite poisoning. So many things are there. So clinical toxicology is actually very interesting if you, you know, read the topic. And I will also tell you, you know, my personal perspective of, you know, good references for each and every chapter that I talk in my YouTube video so that you can, you know, download its PDF or maybe buy that book or something like that. And you can, you know, refer it out for yourself. So I hope that my guidance will help you in your competitive exam preparation. I hope that it's not just for your competitive exam, but I believe that, you know, you should learn it for the long term. You know, many people talk to me. Many are preparing for their competitive exams. I do sincerely hope that it will help you, but it should help you in the long run as well, because smart knowledge should not be restricted to merely exams. It is actually, you know, it deserves to be extended much, much beyond that. 
सो दिस इज माई आइडिया डू लेट मी नो योर फीडबैक बिकॉज योर फीडबैक इज प्राइसलेस विदाउट योर सपोर्ट नथिंग इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज द एफर्ट्स दैट आई एम्प्लॉय आर नॉट सो ईजी इट्स पेन स्टेकिंग इट टेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम टू असिमुलेट स्मार्ट नॉलेज एंड प्रेजेंट इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू तो प्लीज मेक श्योर दैट यू सब्सक्राइब टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड ऑल्सो फॉलो माई इंस्टाग्राम पेज अंडर द सेम नेम सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर लिसनिंग टू मी होप टू सी यू सून अंटिल देन इट्स बाय